Yeah, Disney World, apparently 8 in the morning. Why would you sleep in between those two events? Uh, you got to go back to Kansas City, take care of some laundry, run through a parade again, and then he's back to business. And by that, we mean a potential three-peat. How impressed are we that the Chiefs' performance last night led Peter yet again to not only another Super Bowl win, la la, but a come-from-behind one in nature? It's insane. I, I love this version of Mahomes, too, where they're like, well, it's a business trip. They ain't no trip anymore. Business is like, over. Business, business is over. Uh, I can tell you, as knowing people who are in the locker room, there's all sorts of videos. Uh, $105 Cohiba cigars. That's oh. what they were smoking in the in the locker room afterwards. All over the Raiders locker room, which the Raiders famously did all season. Max Crosby yeah, and the boys smoking true. the cigars when they would win games. This was all the Chiefs doing it. You had multiple celebrities in there after the game. I don't think Taylor Swift was in the locker room, but we had Paul Rudd and his son. You had Eric Stone Street. He was in the locker room. It's, it's Jack Rudd and his dad. Jack Rudd and his dad. Jack Rudd with in a 22 Jack. Dexter McCluster jersey so hanging out in the yeah, locker room. Yeah. Deep cut. Much respect. <laughs> Uh, now it's just, okay, you're chasing Brady and it's all this stuff, but I love that Mahomes says, I, I, look, Brady beat me. Like, that sits with oh, me. That he's is... mentioned it every mm -hmm. time he's been asked. Brady beat me in a Super Bowl. So you know that Mahomes is not going to engage in this and say, until I can get to that stage, we're going to do it. Uh, I'm in awe of the guy. I, I, I think he represents the league really well. I think the overtime is what I'll be taking away from this thing. You said you give them a chance, he'll kill you. And in this game, in overtime, the, the Niners get stifled at the goal line. They end up having to kick a field goal. And then in OT, it's like a touchdown wins at Mahomes. And what does he do? He goes eight for eight, has two of the biggest mm -hmm. runs of his career, and they find a way to win in the end. Uh, I could wax poetic about Mahomes for the whole rest of the week, and I will. Um, I think Chiefs fans waking up this morning, just be grateful you got this guy because he represents everything you want from a city. And I, I will say this. <coughs> Off the field, the Mahomey Foundation that he does, what this guy does in Kansas City might be unmatched by any other player in the league as far as being all ten toes down, boots on the ground. And that includes everyone that we love and we've given so much love for. He is as a part of mm -hmm. Kansas City and the entire community as any player represents their fan base. Uh, Mahomes, just hats off again and see what you do next year. I, I agree with you totally. I remember I was we were at the Houston Super Bowl between Tom Brady and Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons and the Patriots, and Lee Steinberg, who was my agent, uh, walks up at his party and introduces me to this young man named Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sitting there uh, talking to him, and, and, and I remember going into the combine. Um, there wasn't much talk about the young man. It was about Mitch Trubisky. It was about, uh, you know, Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson and everybody else. Deshaun and, Kaiser. And all of those guys in that Kaiser. in that scenario. Nathan Peterman and all, all of them. And Patrick was was an alpha. Uh, I got a chance to mentor him during the combine process, and you just watched guys step to the forefront. A, a, a group of alphas, guys that step up and become one of the group. In that, Deshaun Watson certainly did that. So did Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. And we've watched him go. And I remember walking out of the, the Lee Steinberg's party that day, the Saturday before the Super Bowl in Houston. And I remember walking out, and there's this guy all by himself, just standing there waiting for his Uber to come, and it's Patrick Mahomes. And to think in that moment, like, this will be the last time, realistically, this young man will ever be able to stand by himself alone yeah. waiting for an Uber to come get him because of what Peter has just said, what everybody else has seen. And as somebody who wanted to be great at the quarterback position in the NFL and wasn't able to accomplish it, to see somebody go out and do it in the fashion in which he does is so impressive. There is a small, small group of people who can say they played quarterback in the NFL. And to know how difficult it is and how hard it is to get up week in and week out to do what he does and to see him do it with such ease and for me to in that moment to go, oh my God, this game's over because of who he is. You talk about the wide receivers he threw touchdowns to in the last two Super Bowls. Right. Like, Sky Moore didn't even get on the field last right. night. Right? He catches the touchdown last year. Kadarius Toney is a big yeah. reason why they want him. He's nowhere scratch. to be found. <laughs> and then you have McCole Hardman, who was on the New York Jets to start the season. My big question is, who's on the New York Jets roster going into next year that's going to be a Super Bowl champion somewhere else? <laughs> that's the bigger question here in New York. I, I, I'm just so impressed by him. I, I don't know if, if, I mean, words can't do it justice. It's just been such an honor to watch a guy do what he's done over the last six years. I bet I bet the Uber driver wouldn't even unlock the door until he proved it was Patrick. He was Patrick? Is you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's Patrick. I mean, he gets into a Hyundai Sonata. Yeah. Pulls Uber Five star X. rating, of course, for Mahomes. Probably a great rating. Yeah, yep. right? Great rating. So polite. It was he's rainy. It was rainy. It was, it was wet and rainy. It was a <laughs> bad day. And yeah, he was just such a I would need to know if he was by himself. If, you know. Sure. Ryan said he was standing there by yep. himself. Yep, by himself. By himself. Yeah. Sometimes, you know. All right. Um, I'm, I, you know what I want? What? 
What are you implying? Yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm implying sometimes when you go with other people, they don't have a five star rating and they're like a little loud or, you know. Like, oh, they yeah, take you know down saying? your rating. I yeah. see. What's your rating? You guys got, you got a good rating? Yeah. We've done that. Yeah. 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 Um, Mine's bad. <laughs> I, give, I give a five star rating to. Uh, this is a, not only just a good, but a great, but a historic Chiefs defense. Like, this, they did something unbelievable. Yep. We know their defense is good. So, before we even pull it up, just remind it that the, that the Chiefs defense placed, they, they, they played Josh Allen twice. They go against Lamar. They did that Miami offensive machine twice. They go against the Shanahan offensive machine. All, the Eagles, when they were really good, they never gave up 28 points all season. Amazing. Where does that rank contextually? Give me this. This is an unbelievable thing that we have put together. So look at these teams. Most games allowing fewer than 28 points, 21. Stop. Those two defenses are the best two defenses I've ever seen in my life. The Ravens in 2000, the Bucks in 2002. Like, there's 50 Hall of Famers between them. Then we're going back to the Steelers, uh, the, the uh, Bill Cowher wow. Steelers. And then that's the Packers-Rodgers team. Not, never mind 30, not even 28 points. 21 games, and we're in the era of points. <laughs> Everybody scores. Everybody has a generational quarterback. Every rule benefits the offense. And even against all these geniuses and Shanahan's and Mike McDaniel's and the Justin Herberts and all Josh Allen's, Lamar Jackson, they don't, you can't get to 28. I, I take so much crap from Chiefs fans because I had to take earlier that they got to score 30 points to beat the Chiefs. Just score 30. They can't do it. They can't keep up with you. That's right. 28. That's when you're looking down on a defense that is the Ravens of Ray Lewis and the Bucks of Derek Brooks. Those are Super Bowl champions, and it's like the Chiefs do it, and they don't have who even Ray scored 28 Lewis. on them. I don't have the reference. 27. The Green Bay Packers scored 27, 27 points. Jordan I guess Love Jordan Love got yeah. 27. Nobody yeah. got to 28. That's this. This is not the 60s. Like everybody scores. You, you wake. You roll out of bed in the morning. Yeah. You get off the bus to score 30 points. Not against this team. It's amazing. Amazing. And it's the youngest team, youngest defense. Youngest defense in the league. Youngest defense yeah. in the league to win a Super Bowl. Uh, crazy. Uh, it would be weird to go hour 15, 16 into the show. And just let's, can we cover the Travis Kelsey thing? Uh, and it wasn't you the first time. You got a take on it? I don't have a take on it. I just okay. want to pack it a little bit. I'm going right. to go around the table on it, okay? Because it happened. Uh, we all witnessed Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey having a moment. And I think the moment was started by his tight end. Now, this is coming after a very frustrating offensive drive. This is in the first half where things were not going well for the Chiefs. And obviously, Kelsey felt like the offense maybe should have been running through him a little bit more. Now, these two have worked together for a long time. I'm sure the two of them, besides Mahomes, know each other better than most. But when you guys first saw it, now that you've seen it subsequently and how the game transpired, your thoughts? Well, in the heat of the moment, you're a player. It, it, it is what it is. I will say this. Andy Reid is kind of like a jolly old fellow, all right? So his balance, probably not that great. Travis Kelsey is a very physical guy. That play you're talking about was right after a throw that went to McCole Hardman over the top. Yes. Kelsey was open. He was excited for the catch because he knew it was a big play. But then they took him out, and they ran the ball with Isaiah Pacheco, who fumbled the next play. Mm -hmm. So he was insinuating, like, let me cook down here. This is what's going to get us a championship. You don't like the way he went about it, but this dude was locked in. Did you see him during the national anthem? Yeah. I mean, th there was a, a focused intensity of Travis Kelsey that I was like, I mean, there's a there was there seemed a little bit of a like sociopathic edge to him at, okay. at, at, at times, and that was kind of an action of that. Mm. All right. So, I, I think that a lot of people get up in arms about if it was somebody else, it made a bit a bigger story. Yeah. These two are so close. You hear and you you see yeah. how they talk with one another and how they know. He could have handled it differently in that moment. Certainly, Andy Reid did not see it coming, clearly, because, uh, you know, the jolly old fellow almost took a tumble there. Uh, but I, I think it's a, a whole lot of nothing, and because they won, it's going to be a whole lot of nothing. I've been to a bunch of Chiefs practices. You know, you go there, and it's, it's Kelsey up and down the sideline screaming at guys. That's how he is. I didn't like it. And he had one catch for one yard for most of the yeah. game, and it was yeah. like, where's Travis Kelsey? Of course this is terrible. You don't want this on, on television in front of 100 and, you know, the numbers will come out, I'm sure it's 130 million people. It stunk in the moment, and they win, and so it's all good, and it's Viva Las Vegas. But if we if they lose, we're talking about this today for oh, yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad he didn't fall down. I know. A completely different image. How about Jet McKinnon here? Yeah. Like the body man. Jet is like, come yeah. on, what are we doing, dude? I, what I would say, though, I know a lot of people were pissed about this, and it is a bad look, and it's a weird thing that would have been way bigger if they had lost. For the, if player X had done this, would this would have been the, listen, if player X was in his fourth Super Bowl with that head coach and had that kind of history with that head coach and that type of success, I think Kelsey was pissed. 
I think he walked over to, to Andy Reid and he was kind of like, let's go. Let's have a little physicality here. Let's go. Wake up. Wake up. Like, I think they have that kind of relationship. I think he stepped over the line and did too hard because he was running a little too hot. But I think there's just so much of a history that Andy Reid afterwards just joking about it. He's like, yeah, he surprised me. He jumped out of nowhere. He told Peter King. So I don't think it is as easy as sub in. But even I was player. saying, even I was saying, why is Kelsey not in the game? So, mm -hmm. like, I'm watching. I'm like, why is Kelsey not? Kelsey was not, like, I think that's why Kelsey was pissed. He was mm -hmm. taken out in a big spot again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that happened in Buffalo, happened in Baltimore. So he's angry, I think, because he wants to be in the game. I agree.